Greetings, motors. How are we this fine Friday? Freya's day. Fry's day. The day where we fry things. By chicken. Will I get some chicken from the butchers? I might. I don't know. We shall see. We shall see. Griffu, Stabaru, Desmondu, Wakamu, Tupac Dingo. I, I love the way like fucking a handful of people just show up way before the stream even starts and they're just like, come on, let's do this. <laughs> and saying hello to each other. <laughs> he ribs and breeds much key. Much, much chi, much key. I, I can't help but say key when I say that. Will be gathered. Indeed. You forgot to replace the L's with R's in the word will. <laughs> he rives and breeds. Much key will be gathered to do. <laughs> like, it's hard to do, isn't it? Like, I think I, I might like inadvertently be like uh, giving all of us a little bit of a brain virus by speaking fucking uh, Japo all the time. Especially when you start typing that shit like fucks with your head like. Froz Freitag. Guten Tag, mein Bruder. Wie geht's? This fine Freitag. This, like... Man, do I fucking love the German language. It's more fun. In, like, loads of ways. Like, do you know, like I think, like, I consider it a challenge to try and say a word that has 26 letters in it. Like, you know. Ein Flugen schafft in Schelgen Kuschkugen. Me. Schaft. Like, or some shit. Like, it's fucking... I love that stuff. Like, remember the first time I seen words like that and then the fact, like, that they were actually a real thing. I was like, you serious? There's actually people, like... Imagine being able to just fire that off in the middle of a sentence. Like, it's ridiculous, like... So, yeah, I was at the blah, 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 blah. Like, and it's just one fucking word, like... Mad shit, like... Ah, sip, sip. Of the beautiful Agua. Oh, I was doing more. Uh, now that I have the symmetrical finished and up for sale. Um, I was focused more on uh, the turtles again this morning. And I'm quite satisfied with the little sketch I did this morning for one of them. I did the, the grenadier one again. And instead of giving him a bazooka and some grenades on a, on a bandolier, I gave him... A bandolier full of like 40 millimeter grenade you know impact shells and a fucking uh 40 mil grenade launcher thing you know the thing with this the, the cylinder the rotating cylinder it's like a fucking rev the revolving grenade launcher um like if you if you if you know your guns all i have to do is say 40 mil grenade launcher and you fucking probably know what i'm talking about like you know but like for those who don't know their weapons <laughs> for those without any honor <laughs> Like, skip people shit for not knowing their guns. Like, and I, I live in a country where fuck all people have guns. Like, oh god, right. The, uh, I was go I was gonna wait till we have more people here, but we had like I don't care if there's only a fucking one person here. I just want to share this with someone, and hopefully it looks alright. But uh, before the stream. I was just like I I was uh, uploading the uh, symmetrical to be sold on my various platforms and social media, and uh, the beauty that is the M thirty two, indeed, brother. <laughs> like that, like that. Uh, what's that? What's that word? That um, like it's one of those. What what's that term for a sound that's like fucking that that memorable that unique yeah that like unique and memorable thump you know that's what i call the fucking uh you know the breech loading single thumper from like world war Two and shit it's just like a cylinder with a stock and it like breech loads it like snaps open in half and you just load one 40 mil shell in the thing and just it's a thing that terminator has in fucking uh in t2 he like puts it he puts a 40 millimeter shell in fucking uh, in the t1000 in the in the liquid metal He's made of a, a, a liquid metal poly alloy. <laughs> Polymorphal alloy. <laughs> What's that? Liquid metal. 
fucking I, I need to watch Terminator 2 now like I need your clothes your boots and your motorcycle fuck it uh, put the MK19 I, I fucking hate the way the fucking messages get cut off oh but the MK19 is the best which is the MK19 like I, I don't know my weapons that well I don't know all the letters and numbers and shit I know certain ones like, I know that M14 semi-automatic assault rifle is, like, one of my favorite weapons in any game. And, uh, I got, I don't think, did I, I didn't get to fire a semi-automatic one, but I got to fire, I got to fire something that's, like, you know, real similar physically in terms of a rifle. Because the M14 is still, despite the, like, modern carbon plastic, you know, black metal fucking variants, it's basically the modern version of the M1 Garand. And, uh, but it doesn't have that, like, bump, 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 cling! You know, like, it's, it, you don't have to fucking, uh, empty the fucking magazine for it to eject and shit. Which, apparently, you didn't actually have to empty the, you didn't, you weren't actually forced to empty the mag in the M1 Garand. There was a way to just, like, get it open, but apparently it was quite awkward. Um, and why would you want to when, when you get that beautiful ding at the end? Like, that, like, that's another one of those really distinct and memorable uh, noises when you hear when you hear it you're just like that's an M that's an M1 Garand you know the pum 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 cling <laughs> like it's fucking I love that shit like there's there's a frequency and a there, there's a music there's a musicality to warfare which I think for someone like me who is like artistic um, and obviously you don't need to be artistic to be into fucking warfare and violence like do you know what I mean there's plenty of fucking knuckle draggers with like absolutely not a thought in their fucking head who just love things that go boom but like especially for people like me who love like visual visually striking things and things that sound awesome warfare whether old or new is one of those things that is just like incredible to like uh like I was gonna say witness, but like I've never witnessed. Like who who of us has actually ever witnessed like actual warfare? Like do you know what I mean? Closest I've gotten to actual warfare is airsoft. <laughs> like I went paintballing once, and I went airsofting like I think fucking what three times or some shit. Like yeah, maybe four. No, I think it was like two or three. Um, one fine summer. It was great. I fucking loved it. Um. But, like, the second you become conscious that you're just getting hit by tiny little BBs, like, it's like, you start to, you start to do things that you wouldn't do in a real, in a real firefight, like, do you know what I mean? Which is, like, I th I always, I always find this correlation between simulated battle, like, simulated combat for fun versus actual combat, I always find so funny, because, like, you, you have so many fucking, like, nerds doing the simulated combat shit. And it doesn't have to be, like, you know, shooting each other. Like, it could be fucking, like, you know, uh, UFC or fucking, uh, you know, karate tournaments or some shit. Like, beautiful song. Ooh. I, I, I'm not playing any music. Is is my is my voice just that musical? Or are you talking about warfare? <laughs> you see a lot of cannons going off and, like, muskets and shit. And you're just like, oh, what a beautiful song. <laughs> a symphony of destruction. I remember, do any of you remember, for the gamers out there, uh, there was an ad for a game on the PlayStation 2, uh, 2 called Black. And uh, it was a fucking first-person shooter. And it had really good, uh, like, bullet physics and destructible environments. And the ad on the telly uh, for it was actually, like, really cool. Um, they played that classic tune fucking... I think, I think it might have been Flight of the Valkyries, I'm not sure. But it's, like, it's one of those very, like... Uh, recognizable famous uh, classical uh, pieces and they were just doing a 360 degree pan of the inside of the White House while someone was just like shooting it up in an AK like I was f one of the coolest fucking ads for a video game ever like it was fucking awesome Mega Death Jinjuru Black was a yeah you know you remember Black Black was fucking awesome Black was class like and I remember going back to play Black that's just hilarious to say I went back to a prey brack. Um, not that long ago, like fucking like a few years ago, I went I went back to play it, and it was still entertaining. 
like it was still it still felt good you know it's still and it still looked decent you know for a ps2 game and shit like there's there's a lot of games on the ps2 where you go back and play them and you're like man what happened to gaming <laughs> you know like they give you that fucking feeling we need to listen to the 1812 overture now well what i was going to start with was this shit right so i have the window capture thing on let's see if this works so i hope you're not too busy to watch for a few minutes because this shit before the stream made me laugh real hard. So, uh, Bravey Bear sends me this on Instagram. And it's this fucking, uh, some, it's like two guys like dressed up as like, I think it's is a cane, you know, from like WWE and all. I don't know what the other guy's wearing. But he's just, they're on a tram. Like, you know, in Ireland, we have these things called uh, Lewis. They're trams. It's just a tram, like, you know. Uh, but they're called the Lewis here, like, you know. How do you do? You see, like, look, as I can imagine, you would see some mad shit on, like, the, the subway or something in New York. Like, you see some mad shit on the fucking trams uh, going through town in Dublin. Especially Dublin. And uh, this, but this isn't, like, some mad shit in terms of, like, you know, degenerate druggies or some shit. Like, this is fucking hilarious. <laughs> I don't know, like, I don't know if, like, how well you guys can see that if you're watching on your phone or, or laptop or something, like, but he just, he just picks this guy up and put him through the table in the middle of the, people just, like, going to work, coming home from work, you know, like, going to visit their grand, like, you know, and this is happening, like, I love shit like this where people in full costume just commit to shit and do it in public. Like, fucking, do you remember, like, Trigger Happy TV? I don't know if you guys got that in America, because it was, like, a UK thing. But Trigger Happy TV was so fucking funny. I, I put some of it on recently on the stream, actually, I think. Or at least I, I, I probably tried to. Where it's, like, the dogs beating each other up in public and shit. And, like, oh, my God, it just has me in stitches. It's one of those things where, like, it's just fucking... Um, raining brass... <laughs> Is that Juju? Is what Juju? Ju Julie? Who's Julie? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, it. That's Julie Howard. That's Juju, yeah. Fucking... I was like, what? I'm now looking at the chat, and then I have windows over here, like... Yeah, there's a fucking uh, stuntman bear and all, like, grungy and shit. Like, I'm supposed to be doing a fucking bear of banter this weekend, and I haven't fucking uh, confirmed or denied. Um, it's supposed to be me, Scouse, stuntman, and grungy. And I've like I asked them to do it last week, and like stuntman couldn't do it, and then I've like fucking rescheduled, and like I've, I haven't fucking even spoken to them since. But we'll see what happens. I haven't done a bear banter in fucking ages. But then my sister sends me this, right? Oh, I couldn't, I couldn't stop laughing at this. This, this made me laugh so hard that like you know, like if you laugh like me, where like something funny happens, I like explode. I like go off like a gun. I'm like. <laughs> Like I and I I get so loud I make like mics peak and shit. Do you know what I mean? like <laughs> this made me laugh so hard. <laughs> it's so fucking <laughs> I don't know if that's like CGI or some shit. <laughs> but like look at the face on the <laughs> Oh my god, I love shit like <laughs> Like nigga, what you doing? You eating my shit like <laughs> That's what it's shit like that, like if people say for people who say like, you know, the fucking like animals don't have souls and shit like, you know and some people do say that shit, like, you know, they they don't have a soul like we do and all like fucking like they do man like to like animals Animals have a soul, like, and they can, like, express themselves and shit, like, like, animals, so, a lot of animals have, like, facial expressions and shit, like, you know what I mean, like, it's so fucking funny, like, Denmark Barrow, Uwakamu, to Bentingu, looks like my cat, which one, the ginger one or the other one? Um, that fucking, that little, uh, that ginger cat that fucking followed me in the missus home there the other day was fucking adorable, it was. It's a bit blurry, but the other guy looks like he's impersonating the Iron Sheik. <laughs> That's wicked for Oh, man, it made me giggle so hard. Like, you know, I love that stuff. Like, people just, like, proper committing to, like, some just absolute random shit in public. Like, 
The ginger one. You have a ginger. Have you have you just got the one car? The one ginger car. Hail Denmark! Not even hail Denmark bear, just hail Denmark. <laughs> all of us just bowing to the glory that is Denmark. While Denmark bear is like, this place has gone to the dogs. Oh, I think that's so funny, like, the contradictions and just the juxtaposition between, like, say, like, what I think of uh, Africa, let's say, right? And then what an African thinks of Ireland. And then, like, what I think of Ireland from being Irish and growing up in Ireland and what he thinks of Africa and growing up in Africa and all that shit, like... And that's, what, like, I would... I'd love to fucking do a podcast where I actually just, like... Like, if I if I had uh, fuck you money, I would fly people. I Like, just random people. I'd fly them to, like, an office that I have rented out. Because obviously you don't want to just bring random lunatics from the internet to your home. We all know that's a bad idea. <laughs> Like, I, <laughs> shit just never works. But uh, I'd I'd love to do that. Like, I'd fucking love to do that. Where you just get these like just normies, like you know, like some guy that works in a sh- fucking factory or some shit in uh, I don't know, like Uganda or something. Like some fourth year old dude. Like, so he's like you know lived life a bit. Like maybe has a few kids and shit. Like, and he's just like, so what's it like being an African and growing up in Africa? Like, and get his perspective. Like, do you know what I mean? I don't know you can watch documentaries and stuff, but, like, so much of, like, entertainment and media is all, like, you know the way, like, they frame shit a certain way, like, do you know what I mean? There's always, like, a fucking, almost always, anyway, like, a, a, an, a biased narrative from some perspective, like, you know? And that's why I think, like, taking the piss and just being funny, like, whatever about being a comedian, you know? Because, like, being a comedian, like, in in my opinion, is, like, that's like a craft. Like you tell jokes. Do you know what I mean? Like you, you, you're specifically designed to make people laugh in the sense of like storytelling or telling jokes. You know, but like uh, things like observational humor and just like slapstick and like uh, you know, fucking like there's very little fucking profound thought in two guys wearing dog costumes one of them wielding nunchucks and the other one wielding a fucking you know wooden katana or something kicking the shit each other out, <laughs> kicking the shit out of, each, uh, out of each other in front of a fucking sainsbury's in, in england like in broad daylight like like that's just hilarious like you know in and in and of itself like you know and like i think true journalism should just like kind of should have to take a pit should have to take the piss a bit you know because like the reason stuff is funny is because it's true so like when you into like you know instead of trying to be pc and like someone's like you know and then we eat the monkey brains instead of being like oh that's fascinating like do you know what i mean like it'd be so much more entertaining and like more relatable and fascinating to be like you know and then we eat the monkey brains to be like sorry you what now I thought you had him on a chain because you were, you know, fucking trying to entertain me or some shit because I'm a filthy foreigner. But, like, you intend to kill and eat the monkey's brain? Like, you know, like, for, like, I remember seeing a clip from some country. I can't remember what. I think it was, like, Malaysian. It might have been Indian. But, like, they they have this tradition where they uh, fucking, this light is fucking blinding the fuck out of me. Um, They have this tradition where they get their ancestors that, like, could have been buried for, like, decades by now, right? But, like, every so often, they fucking dig them up, and they, like, they, like, unwrap them and shit, like, do you know what I mean? And they're like, oh, bless you, no, oh, we love you so much, oh, I miss you, you know, like, and then wrap them back up and then bury them again, like, you know? And, like, Tim, I remember, see- remember watching that, and I was just like, oh, my God, that's, like, that's hardcore. Could you imagine, like, so this is Granny Mukpacha, you know? She was a lovely woman, you know, like, and, like, your fucking eight-year-old daughter who never met her or something, or met her, like, one time when she was a baby, you know, she was, like, fucking 14 months old or some shit like that, like, you know, and it's, like, playing with Granny, like, you know, and then, like, she's, like, eight or something, and you just dig her up and, and unwrap her in the middle of the village, and you're, like, now, say... So, Thank God for your grandmother's amazing life and the blessings and the fucking, you know, like, give her gifts, give her a little fucking 
handmade doll or something, some flowers. I don't know. Like, it's like, what the fuck? But like, it does make sense when you when you think about it from their perspective. It's just their way of showing reverence and stuff. Like, you know, fucking from our perspective, it's like, that's like mad. Like, do you know what I mean? It's like fucking like somebody digging a, a grave up is like fucking, you know, heresy blasphemy fucking uncivilized like you know all sorts of shit like plain illegal you know but like this place they do it as a form of like and like they maintain them you know because they do it a few times and shit and they like take them out and then they put them back and all it's like they maintain them so they like it's almost like they have way more respect than we would in a sense like you know like, I always thought it was fascinating when you see the fucking simple ge geometric differences in the design of a Western cemetery uh, or graveyard um, versus an Asian one. And you see the Asian ones, they tend to be circular and they're fucking beautiful looking. You see the Western ones and it's like a field with rocks in it that like are real sharp and angular and everything grey and it's fucking morbid as fuck. Do you know what I mean? And they're, like, known for being places that are, like, haunted and shit. Like, do you know what I mean? It's like, oh, graveyards are creepy. Like, do you know what I mean? Well, you see a graveyard in China and you're like, oh, my God, this place is gorgeous. But it's, like, it's it's full of ashes and corpses and tombs and shit. But aesthetically, it's, like, a really beautiful place to be in. Because of the flowers and the fucking amazing stone you know, craftsmanship and shit and the, like, the order in which they're laid out is, like, you know, meticulous and fucking, you know, beautiful looking and all this shit, like, and, it, like, I've always thought that, that there's, like, this weird, there's weird, uh, and, and pretty obvious, there's weird and obvious um, things to note, properties of, like, uh, Westerners' beliefs and Easterners' beliefs in terms of like the of death and the dead, you know. And you look at Latin Americans, like you look fuck it, like the Mexicans and shit, and they have like uh, what's it called? Is it Ilia de Muerta? Is that what it is? They they have the Day of the Dead. Um, and like the art, and like the Day of the Dead stuff in terms of like uh, aesthetic and artistry and stuff is like fucking creepy, cool, and beautiful, all wrapped up into one and all like. Fascinating shit. There's a fucking uh, ty uh, tirade for you. I haven't gone on one of them in in, in a while. <sighs> You've got three cats? Awesome. The wife came home with uh, a black cat two weeks ago. Instant fights. <laughs> Man, two cats fighting each other is one of the funniest things. The fucking noises out of cats fighting each other. And the way they slap the head off each other at, like, fucking the speed of sound. Like, it's so fucking funny. Like, when you look at a kitten playing with a ball of yarn or something, you're like, oh, that's adorable. Like, and then you see cats, like, fucking going at it. Whether, like, it being intimate or they're being territorial. Like, do you know what I mean? It's just like, Jesus Christ, like... Get a black and white one uh, to be the referee. <laughs> like, just put a whistle around its neck. <laughs> so messed up. Taking pictures with your 200-year-old great great grand <laughs> Corpse all decayed. Yeah. I know, like, it's mad. Like, when you see it at first, you're like, what the fuck? But, like, when you see how much reverence they have for that tradition, and, like, they explain to you why they do it and shit, like, you know? It's like it, it does it makes sense, but that doesn't negate the creep factor of like you know <laughs> like getting to see what your gran looks like after she's been buried for fucking decades, like do you know what I mean? So it's like, oh let's see how let's see how gran's doing, like do you know what I mean? And you open it, you're like she looks well, she looks great, doesn't she? Doesn't your gran look well? <laughs> like just this fucking <laughs> The mummified fucking corpse just staring up at you like <laughs> oh man all the cultures are like I fucking love that shit like do you know what I mean like that's what multicultural uh, multiculturalism should be is like 
just that natural harmony between cultures like do you know what I mean because like that's why trade and commerce is so important and that's why they have such a fucking like you know tight hold over trade and commerce is because like they know that if people are allowed to just like uh you know oh i have this you know and it's like oh that's cool oh well i have some of these you know and then you just trade and barter with each other let alone like engage in transactions and shit like but like they know that that's actually what leads to natural like diversification and uh, harmonious relationships between cultures that are vastly different from each other you know because they they the relationships can be beneficial uh, oh yeah you know it's like oh we have silk it was like oh we can't make silk you know what's silk fuck ooh silk is really nice like oh well i'll give you fucking all this like meat for like all your silk like and shit like you know it's real fucking basic like you know but now <laughs> now people are fucking trading in digital money like you know i like the the fucking idea behind all that shit like i'd love to i'd love to see one uh i'd love to see someone do either like a bit like a short film or a, like a, a tv series or something like you know i don't think you'd be able to make a whole storyline of it maybe you would but like just a, a, a definitely a short film that's like Someone just going on about like how look we have created it, the digital currency utopia, you know, and it's just like skyscrapers and neon lights and flying cars and, uh, and drones and all this fucking shit, and then it just turns and there's like a scientist beside like a massive plug, you know, <laughs> and like some rebels like break in, they like fucking you know they like parasail in fucking uh f like seal team six rainbow six style and just like break into windows with silence weapons and shit and smoke grenades and all and kill everyone in the room and just pull this giant plug out a wall and the whole city just goes Dim. <laughs> like it's like right now that we've dealt with that problem <laughs> like fucking lunatics <laughs> like imagine like all that like even even just for like 24 hours solid a solid 24 hours all these bitcoin heads like you know all these supposed billionaires and shit like all these people with fucking like you know oh my my self-driving car is fucking amazing and it all just goes doom it's dead like and you give it one day and the panic <laughs> like like the sheer panic like <laughs> Oh, this t this thing's after showing up again. Hold on a minute. Hold on a fucking minute. None of my mods are in the chat. I'm gonna have to do it myself. I gotta. I think I'm gonna make Demon Hunter Bear a mod, but maybe I shouldn't because he's probably doing crushing things, lifting things. There's better things to do than moderate my painting goo chat. Goodbye, little fairy. Excellent. What an annoyance. <laughs> yeah, that just ain't right. Let the dead rest and it's wildly unsanitary. Well, like, I don't... Like, I, yeah, one would assume so, right? Uh, off the bat. But I don't know how... I think they embalm them. So it probably wouldn't be unsanitary because the whole like the body would just be like dried out like a bit of jerky you know which is fucking disgusting <laughs> but like i don't think there would be any like negative effects like do you know what i mean like in a in a at least in a case where they have actually taken care of the body properly like and it looks like they do like because the amount of like the amount of wrapping they have on it and all, and, like, fucking, when they finally get it open, like, there's no, like, you know, uh, like, I don't know, there probably is a smell, all right, like, <laughs> that's fucking, like, oh, it's so funny to me, like, yeah, I just, I just love seeing this stuff from other cultures, like, I remember seeing this clip, right, where like uh like same kind of thing actually i think it was the same village i think i think it's the same village that did this the way they kill their pigs was fucking wild like i like you know like if if i had to kill a chicken i could probably just rip a chicken's head off with me bare hands like i probably could like you know they they have that dead-eyed no soul 
retard expression. And that, that I'm, I love chickens, you know, live and dead. I think they're hilarious. They're cute little things. They're also vicious little fuckers. But like, I could probably kill it. There's a spectrum, just like to everything. There's a polarization, right? I would have a problem shooting a bunny. Why? Because they're fucking cute. And like, they're, yes, they'd eat the shit out of your vegetables and stuff. So I can totally understand that if you're trying to farm and have a garden and you have a rabbit problem, I would shoot the fucking bunnies. But I'd still be like, aw, bunny. But I'd shoot them, right? But, and, and I have the same problem with like, uh, if I saw a female deer, I'd be like, eh. But if I saw a big stag, I'd be like, right, I'm going to put this cunt down. You know, like, there's certain circumstances where there's a part of me that's like, you know, oh, I'd like, I'd feel, I wouldn't feel right killing that thing. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, if I, if I see a spider, I'm usually like, come here, you little fucker. And I like, get rid of him. But if I see something like, that's not house orientated or some shit like that, that's like, come out in from the garden or some shit. I usually just squish it and bin it, you know. Like I, be, like I, I would probably do the same thing with a rat or a mouse if I could, like, cause like I believe in training things to not be in your location. But spiders are useful, like, do you know what I mean? <laughs> but then you start saying things are useful, and it's like, well, everything's useful for something, you know. And it's not like I don't like rats and mice. Like mice are cute. I think rat. I think rats. Some rats can be cute, like you know. Fucking. I think rats are awesome. How can you deny the like natural? awesomeness of something that can chew through metal like you know I mean? like there's a reason the warhammer guys that are like do you know it'd be fucking terrifying and cool at the same time if you make an army that are like giant rats like giant humanoid rats that are still very like they're basically just huge rats but they've kind of some of them have some humanoid aspects like do you know what i mean the skaven that's what they're called from Warhammer. Like, and they're fucking nasty and terrifying and awesome looking. Like, if you saw a fucking eight foot tall roided out rat. <laughs> like. <laughs> and the noises they'd make, like. Like, if a normal rat can chew through steel. Could you imagine a rat the size of a dog? What that, what that could do to a human. And we already know what, like, a swarm of rats can do to a human body pretty quickly, like, you know, depending on the circumstances. Don't fuck with rats. <laughs> Respect the rat. Just all the fucking, like, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle fans being like, yeah, rats are amazing. Um... <laughs> Congratulations on coming out of the closet fairy. <laughs> like, I know, he just... He didn't even specify what was gay. He just said, gay. <laughs> and it's like... Fuck off. Like, I don't care. I don't care if he, like, makes, like, a load of different profiles just to try and come back here. I will ban him personally every time if I have to. Like... Oh, fuck that. Like, fuck that nigga. I uh, before that when I came uh, to set up this to schedule the stream earlier on like I've said it a few times there's a window right here um I ca I came in right and I didn't even like sit down I was just like leaning on the desk and I opened the laptop and I'm waiting for the thing to load and I just glanced out the window and there's a fucking funeral procession like going past the going down the road and man it was a fucking like that's how I thought this this is gonna be so funny when I explained it right so. When I seen it, I was like, damn, like, who? There's some money in that, like, you know I mean? They had, like, black horses with the feathers and shit, like, and the horses had been trained to, like, canter a certain way. And they're, like, they, they're they pulling this, like, beautiful, you know, like, matte black slash glossy finish black and silver finish fucking uh, carriage and shit. And there's a guy walking in front of the whole thing wearing a top hat and a cane and stuff. Like, well, he wasn't wearing the cane, but you know, you, you get me. And like, oh my God. <laughs> I saw it and I was just like, holy fuck, who died? Like, who the fuck, who the fuck died around here with that kind of money? Like, <laughs> and I, I just like took note of it. I was like, oh, that's mad. But I, in fairness, I've only been living here three years and I've seen a lot of funerals, which is like, Bit concerning. But there is. There's a lot of old people around here. Uh, another one bites the dust. But, uh... 
So, like, the female comes back for lunch then later on, right? <laughs> I, I mentioned it to her. And when I said, they had fucking horses with the feathers and shit. I said, pikeys. I'm telling you, it was probably pikeys. You know, like, uh, they go all out, like, for weddings and funerals and stuff. Like, and she's dead right. Like, she probably, probably fucking was butch pikeys. I say, for those of you who don't know what a pikey is, it's basically a gypsy. It's the same thing, like, you know. <laughs> like, but I just couldn't stop laughing at the, like, I I start describing the extravagance of a funeral procession. <laughs> and the female just immediately goes, pikeys. Definitely pikeys. Um, painting goo is looking litchy. Thank you very much. <clears throat> I hope you're happy with it when I get like it's it's probably gonna be it's probably gonna be less impressive when you see it in person. <laughs> Let's not lie to ourselves. <laughs> like, you know, like painting goos are definitely like, tend to be those things that look better from a distance. <laughs> the fucking like the stupid speed that I paint these things uh, uh, like in the two hour slots that I'm sitting here at all like and sometimes it annoys me because, like, sometimes I'll, like, uh, like even fucking the female said it and all. I showed her a picture of the thing. And she was like, the mountains and the trees look so nice, but the speakers look shit. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I know. <laughs> In fairness, though, when I started pointing out the bears and stuff, and I was like, yeah, and I did this one on the deck here. And so I <laughs> started pissing herself laughing, like... And like that's what uh, one thing that I've really learned in the last couple of years is like uh, for the for people like if anyone's ever watching these streams and you're an artist like uh, well I suppose uh, Two Acre you're a painter, um, are you just a commercial painter or do you like dabble in painting now and again I don't know I can't remember, but uh, a common thing artists struggle with is like you know they call it artist's block but I don't think it's artist's block it's like you know you just your flow gets stuck sometimes where like because you're you're criticizing your art and you're like it's not good enough so that creates a blockage where you're like you know you don't you you get to a point where you don't want to do it anymore because if you keep doing it and not liking it you're gonna get frustrated and you don't want to be you, you don't want to not like what you're doing you know <clears throat> especially when it's your art and uh what I found is the bit like the best remedy for this is to is to remove uh, remove that part of you that uh, cares about how good it is, um, or how good it looks. And what you should just focus on is like, um, how, can can you like can you tell what it is, like at first glance, like do you know what I mean? The second you look at it, the the second you look at it, can does your eye go, oh, that's what it is. And before you start inspecting it and picking it apart visually and realizing like the inconsistencies and what's wrong with it and all like if at a first glance you can just go, Oh, it's a tiger. Oh, it's a bucket. Oh, it's a wheelbarrow. Oh, it's a fucking pistol. Oh, it's oh it's a cement truck. Oh, it's a fucking this, that like if you can just tell straight away, then it's good enough. You know? Because that's what like art is, is like a depiction of something. Like it's like a symbol, you know? Um something as simple as a fucking circle t all the way to something as complicated as like, you know, a really intense classical oil painting or some shit. Like all it is, is shapes and colors arranged in a very, uh, accurate manner, you know, like, because I used to look at stuff like that and be overwhelmed by like, how do they do it? But once you understand how they do it, even in a fundamental way, you're like, oh yeah, it's actually not that hard. It's like one of those things that's like, it, art's actually really easy to get into, but it's difficult to master. You know? I've come across a lot of video games like that. Um, what, you were, wait, you were waiting for me to ban him? <laughs> I was waiting for that, thank you. Were you. Was that what you were waiting for, Corbett? Was for me to get rid of the elf? That's hilarious. You just see him in the chat, you're like, oh, this cunt again. <laughs> um, a rat the size of a dog, you can go to New York City for that. I've, like, in fairness, I have heard that, but, like, it, like, come on, like, what kind of dog? Are we talking, like, a fucking terrier? You know, like, when I think of dog, like, a real dog to me is, like, German Shepherd, 
boxer sheepdog you know like anything that's like just under waist height or like fucking above the knee you know Re like small dogs like jack russell's terriers like shit like that and all like I, they're fucking little uh what did we what did we used to call them cunt lappers <laughs> the first time i heard that term i was like what <laughs> cunt lapper <laughs> they're like you know specifically those dogs that like women have where they just keep them in their lap or in a bag <laughs> fucking like and they like specifically the ones that are like you know are like raw, 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 the little annoying things is like <laughs> fuck stupid little cunt lapping bastard <laughs> But like I'll tell you now, nobody can curse like Irish people. Irish people, like if you're gonna be, if you're gonna be vulgar, <laughs> oh my god, like the fuck it, like the, like Irish people are renowned for being like really good poets, not just boxers. And I will tell you now, the like opposite end of the spectrum to being really good at literature and poetry is being amazing at cursing. <laughs> We're like. We're the white version of... You know the way black people make up their own language? No matter where they go. Like, black people go to America and now you have niggas. And they're like... Fucking... What's up, car? You know, like... Hello, cousin. You know, is what that means. <laughs> like, shit, I mean, like... What you got in my 40, homie? It's like... What do you have in your pockets that I can now res uh, sequester having knocked you unconscious? Um, Like... <laughs> and then you go to Britain, right? Fucking like you see all that you see all the fucking Pakistanis and Africans and all the, all this stuff that have moved to Britain, and now they have this fucking skeng language or whatever the fuck it's called. <laughs> What's this shit? Uh, drill. They have their own rap. It's called drill. And all that. you have that fucking English gangster culture is fascinating. Like the language and the. The phrases, the colloquial phrases that they use to describe things. I've said this recently enough where, like, there's this, uh, I don't know how recent it is. But instead of saying, like, you know, oh, I, like, shanked him or I stabbed him or I did him in or I, uh, you know, like, a uh, fucking, oh, like, you know, like, can't think of anything else right now in terms of, like, uh, you know, slang phrases or some shit but the, the the one i heard most recently is like you're gonna wet someone up you want me to wet you up cuz <laughs> like, <you> know, like, <laughs> the first time i heard that i was like that is like viscerally disgusting and hilarious at the same time and like kind of makes you sound like weirdly gay like it's got so much roped into it like if i if somebody turned around to me it was like you want me to wet you up gov like i'd be like it, what like obviously like if he's pointing a knife at, at you you're gonna be like okay he's threatening to stab me but like he could just still have his hands in his pockets and he just starts like threatening you like and you're gonna be standing there going like wet me up like what the fuck like first thing i'd probably think of like fuck is he gonna throw acid on me because like that's really common in fucking england like the last decade or so like and I, I anytime i see that shit i'm like oh my god like that's fucked up i'd almost rather get stabbed like you know what I mean? <laughs> could you imagine getting acid thrown on you like especially homemade acid or like god knows what is in it like you know and I, i've heard they put like it's not acid, but they do stuff in uh, in prison where they'll get, like, sugar and, like, scalding hot water. Uh, I think it's, like, do they use honey sometimes? I can't remember. But they're, like, they typically only do it to pedophiles and shit. But, like, you know, depending on how much you hate somebody. But that stuff, that stuff's fucking, like... I'm not one for cruelty. I actually, I actually uh, find cruelty disgusting. In, mu in pretty much all circumstances. Like, anytime I see someone being, like, you know, needlessly cruel, or even, like, from their perspective, uh, justifiably cruel to someone, like, I'm like, Jesus Christ, that's fucking brutal. But I understand, like, vengeance and, like, uh, 
violence with a purpose and stuff like that like you know like that nigga fucking shot my nigga so i'm gonna shoot that nigga like i get that like do you know what I mean? like i did it's it i like i can at least i can at least understand that in my mind like do you know what i mean like i just like but like you see some of this stuff where they're like some just some poor bitch on a bus just gets fucking like a lot of acid thrown on her and then like like the narrative is that like you know you have all this like uh extremist religious shit where like you know uh or like somebody who just thinks she's a fucking slut but it's like you know you'll have someone uh some teenage girl who's like fairly attractive looking and then she gets like acid thrown on her like and then apparently that was like the reason like you know it's like fucking slut like she's got all these pictures on instagram of herself and shit and it's like if you're gonna throw acid on someone for those reasons, like do it to a porn star or something. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, don't do it to some young one going to fucking uni, <laughs> like on the fucking bus. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, like if that's your fucking ideological or moral stance, like, do you know what I mean? Like, do it to someone who like kinda deserves it. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, and still not even really. Like, you know, but I, I just oh. Some of the shit you see now is just, like, ten levels of fucking madness, like. Um, Jesus, what did I miss in the chat? The last thing... Oh, shit. Most came years ago during the war. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? How long we catch up here? <laughs> I love that. Uh, the war. Which war? Uh, funeral here is tomorrow. Ah, oh, shit. The funeral is tomorrow. Shit, boss. Oh, they're like, they're, it's like one of those things where it's like, it's never a good, like, there's funerals that are like, not so bad. Cause like, everyone kind of, you know, is stable and shit. But like, it's one of those things where like, if you go to a funeral and like, there's loads of like, family problems and shit, like, they can be the worst experiences in fucking existence. <coughs> Excuse me. And like, and I'm speaking from experience. When my when my grandmother died, um, I went to the wake, and then my relationship with my father's uh counterpart, um, that thing. <laughs> like, fuck, I actually, I actually don't hold anything against her anymore. Like, I'm just being a dick right now. <laughs> but uh, fucking. Yeah, like, me and her just really didn't get along. And I was talking to me da. And it's like, it's his ma that's died. It's my grandmother, like, you know. And his missus is very, like, uh, touchy-feely and very, like, you know. She, 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 she treats my father like a fucking absolute cook pussy. And we always, from the get-go, we found it, like, really disgusting and annoying like the way she like you know oh my darling ducky Derek and you'd just be like <laughs> like this bitch is off the wall like um but her demeanor and like the her tone and the way she speaks uh to like she doesn't have she doesn't have that like respect like she, like I if I was in her position I wouldn't speak to my other half's kids the way she, she has spoken to us over the years and of all times to, like, have a town with me is, like, my grandmother's corpse is, like, right beside me. And I'm, like, just shooting the shit with me da, talking about, like, world events, you know, trying to just have a normal conversation amidst all the sadness to try and, you know, just be normal instead of focusing on everything being sad, you know. And because uh, that's, like, kind of, that's how, like, our family, like, deals with trauma is, like, we would like take the piss and laugh about things and fucking, you know. Ah well, you know fucking. You see, like you see, gold's doing well in the in the in the like. Do you know what I mean? You just change the subject and just be like, well, it's at least the weather's all right. <laughs> like, you don't want to be like. There's a difference between acknowledging things and like allowing them to like, uh, you know, o overwhelm you. You know, like and become like a big thing. Like you know. And that's where our, like, our, at least some of us, our attitude towards life for years was just like, yeah, it's shit, but, like, come on, you know, get over it. Like, dust yourself off, come on, it'll be fine, like. um, 
obviously she's not like like that right so she like took a tone with me and all and uh I just looked at me that and I was just like, really? Like, you're going to let this cunt talk to me like that? Like, am I, and like, Nan's like right there. And especially in the context of like, he knew that I wouldn't tell her to shut her fucking stupid cunt mouth in that, in that, in those circumstances where there's like kids around and like, everyone's like, you know, it's a very somber occasion and like, you know, it's a fucking funeral. I'm not just going to start roaring and like verbally annihilating this cunt. Um, so I was, I was in the position of just having to fucking like, like just, uh, take it on the chin, this disrespectful behavior towards me, like in, in my own family's thing and all like, I mean, dad let it happen. Like, you know, and I was just like, fuck you. Like, and I, I freaked out. I nearly, like, I nearly fucking, uh, I went outside to the, I was going to call it the smoking area. It's not the smoking area. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I think it is actually like, but it's basically just this like, uh, you know, like an, a wooden awning outside where we're, the wake was being held in the funeral home. And uh, there's just this, there's these posts, these wooden posts, like holding it up. And I just like went outside and I punched the thing. <laughs> and I swear to God, it wobbled a bit. <laughs> and I nearly shit myself. I went from being really like so angry I couldn't fucking contain it and like I hit this thing and it like wobbled a bit and I like I, I went like oh fuck because I swear to god for a moment I thought I was gonna bring the whole thing down <laughs> and it was like it was like a solid structure like do you know what I mean it wasn't a fucking like it wasn't like a fucking gazebo like do you know what I mean like these are like four or five inch uh like squared foot like like you know a fucking like five inch by five inch fucking big varnished wooden posts holding up like a proper roof thing like you know, I fucking like boom like right in the middle of it like you know about about just above waist height so like I hit it really hard like right where you would want to hit it if you wanted to like fucking bring it down like that's where I'd hit it if I was gonna hit it with a sledgehammer, like you know, and it like fucking wobbled a bit, and I went from I went from being like absolutely furious to like being terrified that I was gonna like you know make this whole situation even worse, like, and I fucking uh, I I got the female to got me uh, to get me out of there. I got the female to pick me up. I couldn't stay there. I wasn't gonna stay. I left my grandmother's funeral because I didn't want to ruin it for everybody. I didn't, I didn't want to make it worse. I didn't want to make her funeral about how angry I was, you know. I was so angry. I wa like I wanted to I wanted to physically rip her flesh off her face with my bare hands. Like I was that angry. Like I wanted to put hands on a woman. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like I I just wanted to kill her like with my bare hands there and then. Like you dare speak to me. <laughs> like in this manner, in front of my dead grandmother, the matriarch of our family, the nerve woman, like, you know, like I fucking was, my blood was like turning to vapor, <laughs> like, it was ridiculous, like, and like I did, like a part of me regretted it later. I was like, me nan would probably, me nan would probably kill me from like not being there when they actually put her in the ground and shit, and for like not being there for everybody else to like console them and stuff. Um, but loads of loads of people got it when I left, when I told them I was leaving, and like uh, my uncle dropped me off and the uh, the uh, wish he picked me up. Uh, when I explained it, I was like, I can't, I can't do it, I can't be like, because there was loads of it's, it wasn't just that, you know, there was loads of like lies and like p stuff that hadn't been said that should have been said, and like all this like shit that's just like you know typical family stuff, like you know. And I can't stand that stuff. I can't stand when people just won't have the bollocks to just, like, say what they want to say to each other. Like, you know, it's, like, feels like a bunch of children, not, like, a bunch of adults. And uh, I, cu I couldn't fucking stand it. Like, I was, like, I'm going to blow a gasket. Like, I'm going to fucking, like, you know, like, I'm going to freak out and bottle her. <laughs> like, you fucking bitch! <laughs> like, you know, and, like, me dad probably wouldn't even get in the way. Like, you know, that's the thing. Like, it's... Me dad had become this kind of, the type of guy he just kind of stood there and let things happen and apologized for everything. And like he his hair went white 
real quick. <laughs> like, I remember the next time I seen him, I was like, Jesus, you're getting old real fast, aren't you? Like, I think it, you can tell when you look at a guy, it's like, if he's with, if, if you look at a man who's with a woman who, like, is, is like, draining the life out of him, like a fucking succubus, like, you could, you could see it, like, you know what I mean? Especially if you knew him before, you know? I like, I, I seen that in me dad. I know what me dad was like and how he was and how, we, like, his personality and shit and the way he held himself and, and like, his, he had, like, you know, a code and stuff. And then he got with her. And then a few years of being with her, he was just like, yes, Deborah. <laughs> like, okay, Debs. Okay, Debs. Okay, my love. Okay, Debs. Like, and I remember, I remember, like, witnessing it. And I was just like, oh, this guy's balls. Like, he's like, he's literally, like, sat there and, like, slowly just, like, decided to fucking castrate himself, like, you know, mentally and spiritually. Like, I was just like, what a fucking loser. I, like, vowed that that would never happen to me, like. Anytime, anytime I even got an inkling that uh, Wishy was trying to, like, you know, change me or, like, you know, one of them girls that's like, I can fix him. Like, you know, I, like, get the fuck away from me, woman. <laughs> like, like <laughs> even something as simple as growing my hair long again or something like I'd be like. How are you? How would you react if I grew me hair long again? She'd be like, "Oh, I don't know. Like, you know, like I like when you're all like sexy and like you know, fucking trim, trim looking and shit. Like, just a bit of a beard and all. Like, yeah. You know, and like, I just want to turn around and be like, yeah, well, I preferred if you were like, you know, <laughs> oh, it's like, and I and I have I've done it like you know I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do it now because like I feel like if she was here right now I would I'd say everything but like I feel like I'm saying it and she's not here so I would do that shit like but like I've done that shit where I've like listed off all of my preferences you know and like she's standing there with her jaw on the floor like <gasps> how dare you <laughs> like <laughs> it's fucking hilarious like um. Funer funerals are rare here now. You serious? In what sense? Like, does everybody just get fucking cremated? Like, if, uh, your father's dead. Two de like, fucking two weeks later. Here's your father. <laughs> just, I just hand you an urn. <laughs> like, I always thought that was really creepy as well. When you go to someone's house, and you're like, what's that really cool looking thing on the mantelpiece? It's like, oh, that's our grandfather Earl. <laughs> it's like, hold on, what? <laughs> like... Oh yeah, we had his ashes put in an urn. And you just it's just there? <laughs> like Do you imagine like if we if we came to the realization one day that like all of these like we like get we actually like like public domain, like it's public knowledge. Everybody fucking knows that there's an afterlife and how it works and all this shit. And like it comes out that like so many of the cultural traditions we have are like fucking horrible for people in the afterlife <laughs> where like if you cremate someone <laughs> it's like insanely painful and then like, you put their ashes in an urn their spirit can't travel anywhere <laughs> and they're just locked in place <laughs> and you're just sitting there watching the telly you know like thinking that like you somehow have paid homage to your ancestor <laughs> <laughs> while they're just like let me out like some kind of tortured genie like you know <laughs> oh god like like the shit we do is mad like you know like part of me thinks like like what's wrong with burying people in the back garden you know like I buried my dog in the back garden like why wouldn't you bury your man in the back garden especially if that's like your home if that's like your generational home and he has lived there why wouldn't you get why wouldn't you just get buried on your own land you know under a tree like i fucking like i used to say like that i've i've this just came to my mind right now i've never thought this out i used to say all the time i would love to get buried at sea so my body would like go places like re i mean 
when I say at sea, I mean like the Mariana Trench fucking at sea. Like I want to be strapped to like an object that weighs like 500 pounds and I want to be dropped to the depths. Because like I want to fucking, the way I thought about it was like, okay, like if your spirit kind of stays with your body for a while and then you become a ghost and shit and you start wandering the ether. Um, my thought process, my thought process was like, how cool would it be to be able to like, exist in an etheric sense like in a place where nobody had been or or like fuck all people have been you know like miles down in the ocean where it's like pitch black and you see all these fucking things that look like they're straight up like aliens like fucking neon colored octopi and all this shit like i seen something there on instagram before the stream fucking metal bear sent it to me like and it's one of these like centipede snake look it's like it looks like a really long snake but it's a centipede and it's like semi translucent and has like uh bioluminescent like uh little pink bits on its underbelly and like the ends of its tentacles and shit like well not tentacles they're more like uh, what would you call them antenna like ar- armored tendril leg thingies uh, it's fucking intense looking like it's the sort of thing that if you like if if you were like underwater and you saw it you'd be like oh my god what the fuck like cuz it's like fierce looking you know it it looks mean it looks like it's designed to fuck shit up and like loads of the stuff in the fucking in in the the bottom of the ocean is like that like you ever see an angler fish like an angler fish is one of the most famous deep sea creatures that you'd see out there in the mainstream or media or whatever like that it's the thing it's the thing from finding me uh finding nemo that has the light the light bulb in front of it that's why it's called an angler f- angler fish is because it's basically a fish that fishes for other fish um they're fucking intense looking like if you ever seen finding nemo you know kind of what they look like obviously that's an exaggerated version but not by much they are like genuinely really fucked up and like horrible and mean looking they kind of look like i do these days they're fucking like my like my eyes are like bet into me head like <laughs> seriously need to put weight on like <laughs> I feel like I've been eating, like, you know, I've been trying to pig out, and it's just not working. <laughs> I keep working out or going on walks, and I'm just like, oh, fuck's sake, like, it, I don't want to stay sedentary, though, like, do you know what I mean? Like, if I, if I just stay inactive and try to, like, binge, I'll probably end up with fucking, like, all sorts of posture and back problems again or some shit, like, do you know? I need to stay active, like, but... As a result, I need to eat, like, fucking twice my body weight in potatoes or some shit. Like, my caloric intake needs to be off the fucking charts. (gasps) Jesus. Like, I weigh 11 and a half stone right now, and I'm 5'11". Like, I don't think that's healthy. At all, you know. Maybe if I had more fat on like in terms of like ratio or whatever like that like i'm literally just bone and muscle these days and it's seriously annoying because last year i managed to put a stone on i was like woohoo but it's weird it's like yeah now that i think of it i was actually 10 stone jesus yeah like that's even that's fucking what's that 14 pounds in a stone i was far i I weighed 14 pounds less than what i look like right now it's just every time i see my face i'm like jesus christ yeah like don't get me wrong i'm chiseled and i'm gorgeous but i could i could easily put on a few pounds it's one of those things that's always on my mind now like you know because i'm fucking i'm just like real conscious of it like i want to be swole um most came years ago during the war that's what that's what that's about jesus that's dark (laughs) i remember how extravagant the george floyd funeral was meanwhile my nana couldn't even get a ceremony of her own fucking like it's stuff like that that really pisses me off is like where you get like like it doesn't it doesn't like at the same time like who cares but like our type of people don't care about opulence you know like it's it's cool to be bougie like i don't like i'll be bougie if i like if i can afford to be bougie do you know what i mean like i'll get like overpriced outlandish shit or i'll like pay for everybody's drinks or some shit like that like if i can afford it you know and it's like a cool thing to do on on an occasion 
But when you see people who just like, you know, are wearing and driving and living in unbelievable wealth. And then you see that, like, what kind of, like, their behavior and how they got the wealth and, like, and all this shit. It's just, like, I suppose it's a good thing because for people like me or people like you guys, is like I'd say mostly, is, like, like that's, like, seeing people indulge to that degree or show off to that degree um, reinforces my opinion of, like, fucking... Like, especially as an artist, like, as someone who literally, like, tries to make things that you'd be like, oh, my God, that's insane looking. When when you go overboard in that kind of way, uh, that's where I could, like, I'm like, I, I don't, I think it's cheesy. I think it's gaudy. I think it's, like, you know, on a level disrespectful because I think, and again, coming from me, considering I take the piss out of everything. I think if you make, like, a big song and dance about it, I think it's, like, taking the piss out of it, you know? It's almost like a it's almost like a mockery of some shit. Like like one thing I fucking thought was so annoying at my grand's funeral was uh the makeup they put on her uh put on her I was gonna say corpse, but I didn't wanna be like <laughs> I did I didn't wanna be fucking morbid, like but it is what it is. Like um the makeup they put on her. She looked like a clown. And like me me nan didn't wear makeup, like, you know? And, like, when you know someone like that and you have so much love for someone like that. Like, I loved my nan. I had a great relationship with my nan, like, you know. And it was... That alone was, like, really difficult to deal with at, uh, at the time. Just seeing her, like, the way they dressed her up and the, the makeup they put on her and all, like... And I was just like... She looks ridiculous. She looks fucking ridiculous. This is so stupid, like... And then minutes later, you're like, me dad's bitch fucking said that shit to me. And I was just like, right, I'm not, yeah, I'm not going, I'm not, I'm not staying here. I'm going to fucking blow a gasket. Like, I don't like tear the walls down with my bare hands and tell everyone to go fuck themselves while I stand here and cry over my nan's corpse. Like, I was, like, was going to freak the fuck out, like. But that's a, like I like is that not a te- like I see that as a testament to my character. I've always been like that. I've always like put my I've always like been like I'd rather hurt myself than hurt other people, you know? And like to an insane degree, like to the point where like I've carved my own shoulders apart like a fucking Christmas ham instead of like unleashing the fucking violence that I wanted to upon the people that I was pissed off at, like, you know. I just took it out of myself. And, like, on a level, it works, you know. It's fucked up, you know. It's not healthy. But, like, it's kind of like, you know, <laughs> fucking the, 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 lesser of two, the lesser of two evils. Or if you've seen Master and Commander, the lesser of two weevils. Ha-ha, I've got you. Um, yeah, funerals aren't fun. But, like, I think they should be. I think funerals should be fun. Make funerals fun again. <laughs> Uh, residential homes primarily uh, primarily yeah but you say you say primarily you know answer the question do you dabble um clearly my little nine-year-old niece hasn't uh allowed it to sink in yet once all the people go back to normal she'll realize what it'll be like without uh, without and i can't stand it yeah man that's it's gonna be hard there's no two ways about it you know um it's uh there's there's no two ways about it these moments in life like do you know what i mean like i think these moments in life are where you have to take the piss the most because some like that's like one of the best ways to fall uh, to keep yourself from falling into despair and stuff like that you know instead of just focusing on how much it sucks just try to find something to make you laugh about it even if it is kind of like fucked up you know like even if it even if it's really 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 dark humor, but when you say it to yourself in your head or you say it to your you say it out loud, even if you're on your own, you know, there's no one around, you just say it out loud and it makes you laugh. Do it, you know. It'll help even a little bit. Um, <laughs> we love you, degenerates. For <laughs> if it's under like fifty pounds, it's useless. 
what was I talking about back then? If it's under like fifty pounds, it's useless. What was I talking about? What if if what's under fifty pounds? Remind me about the fifty pound thing. What's on if what's under fifty pounds, it's useless. Um. We oh no, I already read that one. Newfoundlanders uh, talk properly. Fact, people from Newfoundland, like Irish Newfoundland bear. Yeah, like I've heard his accent a few times, and it's really unique. So I can only imagine what like a drunk, disgruntled one sounds like. Who's trying? Who's just cursing you from the heavens? Um, I'd assume we were going to get gassed up. <laughs> <laughs> Cruelty just for kicks is terrible. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> I didn't see your comment before my enthusiastic yes comment. And that yes is meant for the band Elf, naturally. <laughs> I love that. Like, I, lo I love when, like, potential miscommunications, like, go down and this <laughs> turn out to be so fucking funny. Um... Who has 80 grand for a burial plot? I know, like, it's just a fucking hole in the ground. Like, should I... <laughs> like, what are we going to do about the funeral? Hand me that shovel. <laughs> like, fuck this shit. Like, should I... <sighs> like, I'll, I'll write that at me will if I have to. Like, you know what I mean? Like, don't spend any money on my funeral if you don't actually have to. Someone's bound to have a shovel. Find a spot to bury we to bury me... With a decent view or something like, do you know what I mean? And get a stone and like paint something on it. I don't give a fuck. Like, just bury my ass. I don't, you don't even need to bury me. Like, you know, by the time I die, I'll probably have some fucking meta cosmological ideology or like at least opinion about like the the form and ways of existence itself and i'll probably just turn around do you know what fucking wrap me in cellophane and fucking fire fire me out of a cannon i couldn't give a bollocks aim me at a wall on the coast of where's the is it the great where's them walls the fucking the cliffs the the white cliffs of dover the white cliffs of dover like, in, I don't know what part of Britain it is. Maybe it's Wales or some shit. Like, but there's these insanely white cliffs, right? So you're going to fucking wrap me in fucking Vaseline and fucking set and cling film and just like fire me out of a fucking cannon straight at a cliff and see how big of a stain you can make on them beautiful white cliffs. I couldn't give a bollocks. I'm dead. Like, you know what I mean? Like. But that's just me personally. I can imagine a lot of people would be like, please treat my body with respect after I'm gone. Like, do you know what I mean? As far as I'm concerned, like, as long as... When I'm standing over my corpse, looking at my corpse, and then the dude with the cloak and the scythe is standing beside me being like, <clears throat> we need to, uh, you know, like... I, I doubt I'll really be bothered with what the fuck is going to happen to my former vessel. Do you know what I mean? Like... Uh. Yes, my family spent a day with my dad's body. The funeral home took him away and my mom invited everyone we know to hang out for a few hours every day for a couple of weeks. That's a bit intense. My mom invited everyone. Oh, just to fucking, like, just to, at the house. A day with my dad's body. Oh, okay, the funeral home took away. And I went on, all right, yeah, yeah, yeah. For a second, I was like, you kept the body for weeks? Are you serious? <laughs> Imagine, like, for weeks, you, your, your ma's just sitting there with, like, you know, tea and shit. Like, people for for weeks are just coming in, being like, I'm here to pay my respects. Like, you know, and just slowly, he just, like, degrades. <laughs> By, like, week 10, people are coming in, and your ma's sitting there with a thing of air freshener, like, Tsh, welcome. <laughs> like, oh. Which was surprisingly excellent two week party. Yeah, like man, fucking, I that like that's what I'm saying. Like that, like that, the Irish kind of do it like that. Like, uh, with the whole Irish wake thing. Like it's like you should just you should be celebrating that they're dead. You know, it's like well they're not in any pain. You know they're not suffering. They're not like all old and frail. You know like 
and I know it's harder when like a kid dies or something like because then you have he had so much to live for but like I like I really like that Muslim thing that Islamic thing where it's like you know fucking well if God wants him back and he's only seven he must have like amazing things to do in heaven or something I don't know like it's like it like having that kind of mindset is a really strong like way to be you know what I mean like to just not stubbornly refuse to acknowledge uh, pain or misery or loss or like you know melancholy or any of these things it's not that you're stubborn stubbornly refusing to accept reality because that's what it can come across to some people i've noticed that what it is is genuine belief in a grand scheme or plan designed by something that we cannot comprehend and probably aren't designed to comprehend. I don't know. I think I think we could comprehend it. But like most people don't exist in a way that they could comprehend it. Like it might be arrogant of me to say this, but like I think I like if I had like a guide and the goal was to like, you know, over the next like 40 years you're going to like go on this like journey of alchemical spiritual fucking cosmological metaphysical like knowledge extraction uh i think i'd get it do you know what i mean like i because I, I, I don't believe in i don't believe in things that are like so sophisticated that you can't understand them to a point like do you know what i mean because like as long as you're as long as it's shown to you in a certain way or explained to you in a certain way you can comprehend it you know Unless you're, like, really fucking stupid. Like, and I know really fucking stupid people exist. Like, sometimes I feel like, <laughs> like, sometimes I'm like, no, like, they're stupid now. But, like, surely you could, like, if you could, like, do something to them over, like, a period of months or years. Like, they could actually, like, have proper intellect. But, like, I don't know. I don't, like, I, I'm not well versed in, like, biological and, like workings of the brain and human mind and all this shit to actually know that for a fact like if it's like no if your if your iq is this low you're just tick <laughs> like you know like you're you're just a dumb motherfucker <laughs> like, I, like i'm laughing and it's funny so that's probably true <laughs> that's probably the truth you know for definite is like there are so just like there's some people that just seem to be fucking like off the wall evil there are some people that are just fucking so stupid and like their pro their purpose is probably like you know just like a an e just like an evil person i think is is put there is allowed to exist i think i think the grand creator whatever you want to call him her they i don't give a fuck and I don't mean him, her, they as in gender. I mean him, her, they as in male, female, or many. You know, for all of you fucking lunatics out there. Um, where was I? I fucking, I got caught, cut, cut off there. I just, when I said, when I said him, her, they. <laughs> I was like, I'm not pronoun, pronoun fucking, like, I, I'm not doing that shit. <laughs> Oh god. Yeah, like it's, there's so many things that you can say these days that like I'm always like in my I always have Archer's voice in my head where like phrasing, but like not just in a fr funny way. The big like, people can warp your words so to such an extent today. It's really it's mad like um Oh, I was thinking, yeah, like, my thought was that fucking, I think just, like, evil people are put here to test you. Like, evil, evil, evil is allowed to exist to test you. Stupidity is allowed to exist to, like, you know, to, uh, not just to test you, but to show you what not to do, like, you know. Told my mom wants to throw me in the dumpster when I die. <laughs> well, that's a bit, like, you know, you don't want to be discarded like garbage, you know, but like, and I know what I said was like, you know, totally over the top and theatrical and you're like, but at least, you know what I mean? It's like, if you fucking like, 
shoot me like you have to get the money for the cannon and like you have to get you know like how much vaseline does it take to like lube up a whole person <laughs> like you know, two rolls of cling two probably 10 rolls of cling film to like put me in enough of a fucking rigid sleeve to be able to fucking <laughs> so like you know there's a purpose there's humor behind it and all like and you're probably going to get sued by the government for like staining a fucking tourist attraction or something like you know but just fucking you in the garbage like you know like that's a bit you know like i get where you're coming from i don't care do whatever but like not an like that seems a bit negative like that seems like a complete disregard like do you know what i mean that seems like a you know what uh, what I don't want is for people to make a big song and dance about it and think they and to stress about it and to think that they have to spend a lot of money on it. But what I don't want is to someone go, "Is he dead?" All right, and just like the next thing, you just see my legs sticking out of a fucking dustbin, like you know, <laughs> flies and shit, like. <laughs> oh God. Um. I'd want to be buried. Uh, in the ground with a giant spring beneath my casket. <laughs> Once I'm lowered into the ground, that's when the Jack in the Box music begins to play. <laughs> you have the thing on, like, you have a computer in it, like, you, you have a little program thing, like, a little programmed, like, uh, mechanism or a motor in the thing, where, like, and, like, a really strong, like, fucking tempered steel spring that like won't you know age or whatever for like ages like <laughs> i put it on a timer for like 80 years or some shit <laughs> and then like and then get family members and friends like to like you know there's like a fucking there's like a thing you know where like 80 years from now one of your family members is like you like pass down a letter or some shit like you know they're gonna come to the fucking site where you're buried to receive a reward <laughs> you like go to my grave you know like at this date at this time <laughs> and, and you will receive a package like from a stranger in a coat <laughs> You're, they're like what's that noise <laughs> he just get flung out it'd be like an explosion it'd be like your grave just spontaneously exploded and you're the casket and your corpse come flying out with the thing like oh my god that'd be fucking hilarious like our great grandfather said that if we were here at noon on a, on a Friday <laughs> we would receive a gift from a man in a hat <laughs> <laughs> What's that noise? <laughs> Just like boom! <laughs> like, <laughs> oh god, the the fucking with the way the thing I'm picturing in my mind is absolutely hilarious. My cheeks are sore. Um, pretty sure if it involves Vaseline and or a cannon, it's considered a abuse of a corpse. <laughs> <laughs> It's hilarious that there's laws around that. Like, you all know that there's been some messed up shit that people have done, and the cops get called, and the cops show up, and they're like, "What we is doing?" <laughs> and there's just like bits of a body, like, or a body like covered in something, or like full of something, like, just on a table with loads of rubber chickens stuffed in all of its holes, like. We were trying to give him a good send off. Like, I mean, this is so illegal. <laughs> like, what's wrong with you guys? <laughs> oh, we will celebrate him tomorrow for sure. He'll be flying above in a high horsepower. <laughs> I thought that said BJ plane for a sec. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be flying high above in a high horsepower BJ plane for shit. A fucking biplane. Oh my god, I'm gonna start crying. <laughs> He'll, be, he'll be soaring above us in his blowjob plane. <laughs> like it's. All those years of being a devout husband and Christian. Now that he's dead, he's just getting blown by fucking dead nuns. 
<laughs> on a Boeing in the sky. <laughs> it's just hookers and nuns for for eternity. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's just a shell. Yeah, like I wouldn't describe it as just a shell. I know I said vessel, you know, which could be uh considered like pretty much the same, but like shell shell kind of like gives me the sense of like, you know, like like you look at an eggshell. Well, even an eggshell. Like, where I'm coming from is like your body is biodegradable and still has use. Your body no longer is useful to you, but your body can be useful to other things. You know? Which is why I get why we're buried in most cultures. Um, But what, why I also don't get why we're put in a box in most cultures. I don't think you should be put in a box. I think you should just be put down with cloth or something. You know? Um, I think I think the I think the earth and all of its like uh creatures and stuff should have like instant access to your corpse and like you should be biodegraded like as quickly as possible instead of just like rotting in a box you know like f whatever like i f like that uh, seems so counterproductive to me like <clears throat> like if you're gonna put them in the ground put them in the fucking ground like you know like what's the point in putting them in the ground locked away to just rot away like you, you the body's gonna rot away like on its own <laughs> like do you know what I mean which not like give it some critter friends to have a good time with like do you know what I mean like I'd say like I said earlier on like we don't know like we maybe we figured out a hundred years from now or some shit that like the afterlife's real and all these things we're doing are actually horrible like do you, know, do you imagine like being dead you imagine being dead like you know and you get put in the ground and shit starts eating you and you're just like ah oh, ah oh. Like for fucking weeks, like the same with like if they cremate you, like you know, fucking hell, like. But that's the, like I don't like I, I I can't I can't imagine you feel anything when you're dead, like you know. You barely feel shit when you're asleep sometimes, like you know. So like, there's there's not only times where your nervous system is like inactive, and you're still alive, um. There's times where your nervous system is like totally not like your nervous system is not going to be active at all. Like, do you know what I mean? The energetic source that like allowed you to feel shit is now outside your body, you know? So, and I know like there's probably going to be some medical expert. It's like, well, actually, like your nerve endings are the things that allow you to feel. Yeah, but like none of it works without the like, like without the energy. You know what I mean? Like none of this works without the energy. So like, where does the energy come from? And... Am I the energy or am I the thing controlling the energy? Or like, I don't fucking know. Like, it's mad. <laughs> Life's fucking mad. Like, um, you should, <laughs> you should be made, but you should be made into biofuel and given back to the family. <laughs> I say, <laughs> you go over to a friend's house. <laughs> <laughs> he's like fill he's like filling up a fucking generator out the back garden. <laughs> You're like, all right, Tim. Yep, father died last week. Been waiting for this. <laughs> I'm not gonna have to pay for fuel for six months. <laughs> I'm so happy I told him to. I'm so happy I decided to not convince him to lose weight. <laughs> We would have got so much less by you'd have people like fattening up their old people. <laughs> Come on, granddad, like get more mashed potato. You know, when you die, I want like I wanna get like plenty of you out of your like, you know, like <laughs> oh. Fill it up with grandpa. <laughs> Oh god. Ain't no better fuel than granny fuel. <laughs> Grand petrol. <laughs> Forget diesel, Grand petrol's fucking rocket fuel. <laughs> oh god. 
Right, seems like it say, uh, says to dust we shall return, so just do that. Yeah, like, you know. <clears throat> Which probably means we should be burned. You know. But, like, when, you, when animals die in the wild, like, they just, they're either eaten or, like, they're either eaten, like, mostly in the moment. Or they're then eaten by other stuff, whether it be bacteria or insects or like what or fucking water and shit, like everything, like you know. So like, I, I have a feeling you should just like 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 I was saying earlier on, where you just get buried. And I think shallow, like I know it sounds incredibly disrespectful on a level, but like, I swear to God, you should just be like shallow grave in the back garden. Like, family, generationally owned land, where a few of you have been buried under a tree, like a big oak or some shit, and just shallow grave, doesn't even need, like, like a foot down, like, just enough to cover the body, you know, and have it be level. And you just, like, you, that's it, like, you'll, you'll, you'll fucking end up eating an apple, or fucking, uh watching an oak grow or fucking you know having some really zesty lemons or some kind of fucking oh like <coughs> i think like i'm i'm big into natural cycles I'm really big into natural cycles um granddad is heating the house this winter <laughs> yeah i know like that concept's hilarious like <laughs> a lot of b a lot of btus and old granddad like shit Dad is 95 octane. Got that extra boost. Must have been all the boozing. <laughs> oh, that's a hilarious concept. Pappy was always gassy from eating beans. <laughs> now he's just fuel. <laughs> or now he's jet fuel. <laughs> Oh, and like that's not even like that's not even that out there of a thought. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, don't, like, uh, bro, I wouldn't be fucking surprised if there's some like you know shadowy corporate entities out there that have like you know loopholed around uh, government regulations and laws to create all sorts of shit out of like, like I know for like okay, I don't know this for a fact, but I'm guessing based on what I have experienced, seen, and heard, and all this shit. Um, I'm guessing, if you wanted to, it wouldn't be that difficult um, to get a hold of human remains or body parts these days, with things like the dark web and all this dodgy shit. Like, do you know what I mean? If you, if you were really, you know, what's the term? If you, if you were really, like, you know, set on it, if you're like, you know, I need a body and I need one now, you could probably get one. And like, what that tells me is that like, there's probably like, you know, all sorts of corporations or businesses out there like that are just like, n most people don't know they even exist. And they do mad shit with bodies. Like I've heard China, you know, has like skin farms and stuff like, you know, and that's like, stuff that's come out in the public you always have to think about the stuff that it's like okay well if we know that stuff and if and and if this stuff and if and if this stuff over here is the stuff that's like not not as known not like not as known then what's the stuff that like fucking almost nobody knows and then what's the stuff that like literally like only a handful of people like alive right now even know about like that because there's th that stuff i know like and not i know i i would bet money on there's like a group of like less than 100 people out there somewhere who know shit that would fucking like make some people cry instantly you know <laughs> like would probably make somebody like me just sit there and twitch. <laughs> like, so, like, there's been moments where I've seen some things or read some things or heard some things when you're, like, going down rabbit holes and you're, like, trying to fucking, like, you know, okay, so what's actually going on? And what do people think of blah, blah, blah. Like, there's been moments where I've witnessed things and I'm just, like, 
<laughs> I'm just left there staring at it like, and I'm just like, that, but what? <laughs> like, you know, when the blue screen comes up on like run program on a PC, like, <laughs> like, unable to process info. Um, <laughs> fire plus corpse equals boom. <laughs> Do you ever hear all that, like, real horrible shit about, like, what happens to a body, like, on, on like, CSI shows and stuff, where it's, like, if a body is left in water, you know, for, and they bloat and shit, and all, like, oh, God, like, some of the things that can happen to a corpse if it's not dealt with, like, it's fucking, like, absolutely brutal, like, telling you, fucking, the best thing I've ever seen in, like, any telly or heard in a documentary or anything, like, you know, serial killers and all this shit, like, if you want to get rid of a body... You get a drum and he gets massed. <laughs> I don't know if there's any recipes for homemade acid that's strong enough to melt a corpse, <laughs> but like I'm sure they're out there. Like if you can, if you can look up recipes to fuck it, and I'm not that I, I've never tried to do this. You can check out my history. I've like a lot of porn there from years ago, but like I never tried to look up this shit. But like I've I've heard that you like you know if you want if if you go looking you can find recipes on how to make bombs and like all sorts of things like do you know what I mean so like if you like, there's probably places or people out there who are like oh, you want to get rid of a body okay well you're gonna need a barrel this big and you're gonna need some fucking you know like <laughs> you're sitting there with a notepad like uh huh uh huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> And that's what I, that's one of the things I think is so funny about all this Bitcoin shit, like, do you know what I mean? And like the dark web and all, like, you well know there are just a load of fucking, like, it's all, the cloud is all connected. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's all, it's all connected. Like, do you know, like all this digital shit, like, it's all fucking, like, sure, there's places where it's like, you know, isolated and compartmentalized. But, like, if you have the equipment and the resources that the fucking governments have at their disposal, if you want to find it, you can find it. It's there. Like, do you know what I mean? And, like, to think that, like, like who the fuck thought they were like, okay, well, if I just go on Facebook and ask, uh, does anybody know where I can get cocaine? Uh, I'll probably get arrested. You know, that'll probably bring the wrong wrong kind of attention to me. Okay, okay. So what I'll do is I'll go on the dark web. <laughs> you know, like... It's like... It's like, it's still the internet, you dumb cunt. And like, you, like, take about it for two seconds. Like, okay, so you have the internet. And we know that it's monitored. By, like, government agencies and, like, police forces and all this fucking shit, like, you know? Okay, now we have the dark web. Well, what's the dark web? Well, the, the the dark web is, like, the internet that's, like, you know, not the normal internet. It's not the nice internet. It's the raw, it's the, it's the raw underground internet where all the criminals and psychopaths are. And all these fucking people who want to, like... You know, sell drugs and buy illegal shit and, like, do all sorts of mad shit. Like, it's called the dark web. <laughs> like, do you know? <laughs> do you not think that there would be an incredible amount of surveillance on something like that? <laughs> like, oh, but they, there's no, they can't track it. They can't surveil it. You know, like, it's all, it's all underground. Like, do you know what I mean? It's like, oh my God. Like, in the real life when something's underground, even then, the smart person is constantly aware of, like, okay, do they know where we are and do they know what we're talking about? And even if you don't get found out or, like, you know, fucking ratted out by, like, one of your own people or some shit like that or a local, like... There's going to be a moment where you're like, okay, this place isn't safe anymore. We have to move, you know? So, like, you think on the fucking internet, there's, like, a place you can go where nobody can find you. <laughs> like, like, that to me, just, like, like, if it's all fucking, like, whatever. Like, yeah, I know. Like, there'd be a way to, like, build a closed circuit. But then... In order to interact with the greater internet or darknet or any kind of like, you know, what do you call them? Like intranets 
where there's like you know co- there's government buildings that have their own like you know independent network system for like the building you know like you you have to enter the network you know like it's are people really that thick <laughs> Apparently, people are really that stupid. Like, uh, my dad don't go to funerals; they're gone. I can't do anything for him. Let's <laughs> fuck it. Like, I it's mad. Like, I couldn't believe that shit during COVID when you seen videos of people like sit being forced to sit away from each other and all like during a funeral, or not being to have not being able to have a funeral at all or something like. Like there was so there were so many different moments during the whole like two three years of COVID. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Where I was sitting there going, that is another level of fucked up. Like if you, if if you see that shit, and you still think that these people, like in charge of these like systems give a flying fuck about you or what it means to be human or good or bad like the concept of good and evil doesn't exist to these psychopaths do you know what i mean it's just numbers and logistics you know like and that's i suppose like the ultimate evil isn't it i mean like you'd have an evil that's like it wants to be as evil as possible but will it ever be as inadvertently evil as something that doesn't even think evil is a thing you know like am i being retarded in saying that i don't know like i mean it sounds true because like if something is evil but it believes in evil and good and it hates good and it loves evil there's probably a limit to how evil it can be but like if you come across something that doesn't even have a concept of good and evil it'll probably like just by its very existence Create some of the most fucking insane malevolence you've ever seen in your life. You know, like... <coughs> Google, remember not to be evil. <laughs> like, you know, it's like... Fuck. Like, why do you... Why do you Google, remember good is a thing? <laughs> like, you know, like, what the fuck? Like, you know, I don't know. What I do know is I've been sitting here for an hour and 41 minutes just talking ad nauseum. What does ad nauseum mean? Is it being nauseous? I don't fucking know. Look, I hear that a lot. Ad nauseum. That's how I learn most shit. That's how I. That's how I learned how to be articulate. Because I'm not a big reader. I would listen to smart people talk, and I would learn uh, the context of the things used. So it's like, oh, okay. So you say that when you're trying to describe this. Oh, oh, somebody's ringing me. Two seconds. Hello. Hello? Scam. I wouldn't be su- I wouldn't be surprised if like somebody's watching the street or somebody knows I'm streaming is like I'm gonna ring him. <laughs> oh. Oh. Didn't look like a scam number though, it actually looked like an Irish mobile number. Who the fuck was that? Actually, Two seconds. That almost assuredly was a scam number because... Ah, uh, no. It's, v- it's very similar to my number. That's weird. Hmm. Oh, we live... Like, I fuck... That happens to me, like, all the time. I'm sure you guys are the same. You just get fucking, like... You go, you go through periods, like, a month or two where, like, regularly you'll get, like, texts and emails and phone calls from just scam shit and all, like... And it's all these, like, you know, bot programs that, like, fucking snatch your number and details off the internet. Like, and it's fucking mad. Like, we live we live in such a crazy time in terms of, like, the unbelievable amount of bullshit. Like, especially when it comes to scams. Just, like, bot farms and, like, all these dudes sitting at, like, these fucking... Nigerians or Indians or whatever like just sitting in offices just like scamming people madness like utter madness 
if Breaking Bad taught me anything, it's that hydrochloric acid can help with all evidence. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, I don't know, that scene was fucking hilarious. I remember thinking that. I was like, that bat's not going to be able to take that, is it? Like, just, like, it has to be like a special form of plastic and stuff. And all, like, <laughs> and I didn't know if I was right. Like, you know, I was like, am, am I right? I don't know. Like, you know, and then it started happening and all. I was like, oh, God, that's disgusting. <laughs> but it's like like look at cartels like that's what i like they put you in a barrel you know like they put you in they put you in a barrel full of acid and then a fucking ship you off somewhere like uh to a landfill or some shit like you know where they're like where they dump toxic waste and all this crap like um like that's the amazing reality of a lot of this stuff like where you just like you don't realize how nonchalant and like at the same time incredibly efficient um widespread murder is you know like that's another thing that's crazy about living in today's age is like because we have the internet and because we're all like, there's cameras everywhere and we get to see all this stuff like in real time or within days of each other like all over the all these different perspectives from all these different places all these different perspectives from different perspectives and uh It's like, imagine the like imagine the amount of shit that happens in a single ten second period. Like, and I had like I remember thinking this like years ago when I was like a young child, and you're like trying to think about like the world, and you're like, okay, like I walk around the shop, not even I walk around the shop that takes a few minutes. It's like by the time I walk from my bedroom downstairs to the fucking kitchen, somebody has died, somebody's been born somebody's like having sex somebody's fucking killing someone somebody's opened a business somebody's lost everything somebody's found their lover cheating on them somebody like you know and like i wonder how many things have actually happened like do you know what i mean like if you could take 10 seconds of your day and be like okay i went from the bed i went from the bedroom upstairs down downstairs to the sitting room that took me 10 seconds and that's what you did in those 10 seconds and then if you could like have an instagram like if you could just like scroll down what ev what happened to everyone in those 10 seconds around the whole realm and the different shit like do you know what I mean it's like yeah sure you'd have the benign stuff of like somebody's feeding their dog somebody's making a cup of tea somebody's getting in their car somebody's in traffic the, the amount of people just sitting in traffic. <laughs> if you just took 10 seconds out of a day and you had everyone on a list, the fucking amount of people that would just be sitting in traffic. <laughs> oh, God, that makes me laugh. Oh, that's brilliant. Oh, God. Consider AI ordering a hitman on the dark web. Oh, man. Like, that's fucking intense. You have, like, an algorithm set up. So it's like if somebody... Uh, if somebody displays inappropriate behavior or opinions on an online social forum, you have a fucking algorithm that just automatically hires a hitman to go kill them. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> This nigga's in his Tesla and his fucking, his watch just gets a fucking notification. And he's just like, oh, okay. I got another job this evening. Like, <laughs> it's all automated. Like, uh, I don't know if I mentioned this, but uh, if if you're interested in uh, martial arts action movies or just decent action movies, um, it's not a movie, sorry. But like, it, it's like a, it's like a limited series on netflix called the brother's son um oh the uh, the brother's son s-u-n um it's kind of like the brother's grim but it's the brother's son because they're chinese and their their second name is son they are the son family it's really cool i really enjoyed it um i just got reminded of it there it, it's really fucking cool i, I really enjoyed it it's funny it, it's like it's it's like a comedy action and uh, it was really enjoyable so there's one for you. So for over the weekend, you should check that shit out. 
Have you watched fu Stabber? Have you watched fucking Love and Monsters yet? Did you like it? I thought it was a great movie. Grave markers are the only way we can trace ancestry for some. There's a resource online called Find a Grave that helps uh, put the puzzles together. It's pretty cool. <clears throat> yeah, like in that aspect, um, I see, I, I see, like I see the purpose in like a marker, you know, or like you know, here lieth blah blah, blah or whatever. But like, you don't need a body for that, you know. You know, you, like that, like you should just like you could just have a thing, you know, that like. It, like you could have a fucking bench you know like this bench was is dedicated to this nigga you know like you know what i mean you don't have anything like do you know what i mean like you're just dedicated to the person and what how awesome they were and their life and stuff and all that shit like born blah 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 died blah 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 father son brother internet criminal <laughs> i can't fucking know do you imagine reading the graves? Do you imagine like seeing a lot of gravestones in just a normal graveyard? Like you just go, just taking a stroll through a graveyard one day, like as you do, <laughs> and you start reading them, and like they're all normal, and you get to one of them, and it's like beloved father, beloved brother, beloved son, great porn star, <laughs> like. Re revered porn star I'm surprised we don't have something like that yet like I'm surprised given all this woke shit and all this progressive stuff like I'm surprised that hasn't been like a pride gravestone where it's like you know <laughs> you see a normal graveyard with normal gravestones and then it's just like a faggot's grave <laughs> they like the only gay in the village <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking mad. like there's like unicorns and shit oh god man my cheeks are fucking killing me this stream is hilarious for me anyway I, ho I hope it was I hope it was entertaining for the rest of you it's, I've only got 9 minutes left and I haven't put a fucking lick of paint on the day. it's just one of those days Oh, God. Well, so it's going to take me even longer uh, to finish this metal concert. Um, I, t I seriously thought it was so funny earlier on when the female turned around to me and she was like, the mountains are so nice. Those speakers, they're so shit. <laughs> you won't believe the amount of times I've gotten that almost exact same criticism from my beautiful counterpart. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be like, what do you think? I just finished this, like, you know. And she's like, oh, yeah, like, it's cool and all, like. But, like, this is terrible. <laughs> oh, bless her. At least she's honest. Anyway. Right, I'm, I'm actually just going to leave it there because I'm fucking starving. And it's Friday and I have loads of other shit to do. And I want to wanna fucking relax and shit. I have lots of turtles to draw and I have a monkey to make over the weekend. So when I come back, I probably won't have the monkey ready for Monday. Um, but I'm like, now that that symmetrical is done, um, I put I, I put that cement my like, I shot it yesterday on the stream for anyone interested. Uh, well, I'll grab it there real quick. Oh, the latest symmetrical. I have officially announced its release as it is complete. It is signed. It is complete. It is called Deep Demon because it's kind of demonic looking and it kind of looks like it's underwater. So there are no, there is no deep meaning behind it being called Deep Demon, just in case anyone's wondering. I couldn't get the eyes. These eyes. I know there's, four, there's two sets of eyes. The lower set of eyes. I was finding it incredibly difficult to get them like perfectly symmetrical and have really have them match. Um, so I just gave them like one of the eyes is all like scarred up and shit, and it actually came out really well. <laughs> like it looks like proper like dead and shit. Like, <laughs> so if anyone's interested, that is for sale for six hundred euros or six hundred dollars for you Americans. 
I don't know what it is in fucking Chinese money or something. It'd be like it'd be like six thousand yen or some shit. Like but that one's six hundred euros. So th- since since I sold that big one on the canvas to that guy in France, that's the that's the most intricate and uh, most like detailed symmetrical that I've done since then. And like I'm happy with it. It's cool looking, you know. But there is there's a part of me that's like. Oh, I could have done it bigger or like, you know, I could have done that on a canvas or something or whatever. But it's like, I'm trying to like find my, you know, canvases cost me more to post to people, you know. So like, do I charge 450 but then end up paying fucking, like it took, it cost me nearly 100 euro, cost me 70 something euro to send uh, the last symmetrical I sold to a guy in France. Um, cost me seventy fucking euro just to send it to him because it was a big one on a canvas and like the and then by the time I boxed it up and all it was quite heavy. So the female was kind of like, why don't you just put them on like you know nice paper so you can just roll them up and send them in a tube or whatever and then if they want they can like get it framed and shit or whatever like. Um, but I'm always conscious of like oh, I don't want it to be like creased and shit and all that. But it's like it's high quality watercolor paper and as long as I put some paper over it when I roll it up, it'll be fine. Um, and the tubes are quite the tubes are quite solid, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go with that for the moment. Um, but I also do have other canvases there because I I prefer I prefer painting on a canvas. There's just something about lift, like because the paper is more like even really high quality paper like you know like oil fucking like grade paper where you can put oil paint on it or whatever like it's like it's it's good you know it's great it works fine does it doesn't warp a lot at all especially if you fucking tape it down and dry it out correctly however i like the innate utility of the wooden panels and the canvases because you can just like knock a nail in the wall and put them up and it's just there um but it costs me way more to do so that's probably i'd probably like as the business picks up and as as my following grows and as people become more aware of my art and I start making more money, I'll probably do most things on a big canvas, um, because I like the handiness and simpli- simplicity of them. Like, but then I also see like you know other stuff where like uh like this guy I follow on Instagram called Pinstripe Chris, fucking unbelievable artist. Like always does these cars, uh, from certain angles and gets like just incredible lighting on them and stuff like. And it's all just done with acrylics. It's fucking awesome. Pinstripe Chris. Check him out on Instagram. <coughs> he's, <coughs> he's a master. Um, he's he, he's recently done these things where it's just this big canvas, but it's actually just the canvas like hanging from something against a wall. It's not like uh, fastened to anything or like strapped to anything. It's just like, you know, like a cloth. And uh, he does it with like airbrushes and, uh, and stuff and like, you know, it's fucking cool as fuck like do you know what I mean so like I would love to do something like that one day where I just like paint straight onto a giant rug I'm probably going to start with t-shirts and hoodies though Um, most hamsters inserted in a single evening beloved neighbour Most hamsters inserted in a single evening. <laughs> oh God, this is fucking brilliant. Right, <laughs> and with that, I fucking I'll leave it there. <laughs> well, this has been painting goo. I have been Defenderu. I hope you enjoyed Ingu. God bless. Much love. I hope you have an excellent weekend. If you would like to support the stream. The link is in the description. If you would like to buy any of my merchandise, the link is in the description. If you would like me to commission something, DM me. Leave a comment. So on and so forth. Uh, In the meantime, be good, be true, and be beautiful. And I'll see you Monday, bitches.